Hey guys, this is our part two video on the Phillips curve. And I think by the end of this video, you're going to be an expert on the Phillips curve. Here's the name of the video, the Phillips curve, a policy choice question mark. Guys, we're going back to the origination of the Phillips curve and the original Phillips curve was just a Phillips curve. What do I mean by that? There was no short run Phillips curve and long run Phillips curve. There was just the Phillips curve. That's right. At the origination of the Phillips curve, there was just a single curve called the Phillips curve. And it began to be seen as a policy choice, which is kind of nice, right? Right? PC for Phillips curve, PC for policy choice. That's right. It was seen as a policy choice. Now, let me explain that. It's going to take a little bit, okay? Here's the first thing I want you to understand is that every country at any instance of time, at least theoretically, has a Phillips curve, okay? So every, at any instance of time, they have Phillips curve. Now, that Phillips curve could be higher or lower than the way this one is drawn. Even the United States could be higher or lower. I'm just going to say, you know, we have to pick something, right? That this is the Phillips curve for the United States. Let's just say right now, right? It's um, November of 2023. Here's our Phillips curve. And our Phillips curve is showing a trade-off, of course, between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate, right? It's showing that inverse relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. Basically, as one goes up, the other one generally goes down. Now, we're going to say for our instance of the Phillips curve, we're going to associate a 5% unemployment rate with a 2% inflation rate and a 4% unemployment rate with a 3% inflation rate and a 3% unemployment rate with a 4% inflation rate. That that is our trade-off. Now, it was originally thought, if you could see, if you could, if you could graph your Phillips curve, that this was a policy choice that we could choose to either have an unemployment rate of five percent with a two percent inflation rate, or we could choose a four percent unemployment rate with a three percent inflation rate, or we could even choose a three percent unemployment rate with a four percent inflation rate. But we could choose this combination of unemployment rate and the inflation rate, and we could just go with that. But that did not end up being the case. You see there is a natural rate of unemployment. And just for purposes of this video, just teaching purposes, conceptually guys, we're gonna argue that the, or we're not gonna argue, we're just gonna say that the natural rate of unemployment is 5%. And guess what? The natural rate of unemployment is the Nehru for a country. Now I know that's a mouthful, but let's just go through that. First of all, what does it stand for? It stands for the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. The non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. And I know that probably doesn't do much for you, but the definition should. The definition is where we get some clarity here. The Nehru is the lowest the unemployment rate can get. It's the lowest the unemployment rate can get without the inflation rate beginning to accelerate upwards. Certainly, if we want to get a lower unemployment rate, right, a lower unemployment rate, we're going to take on higher inflation rate. That's not the Nehru. The Nehru is saying, hey, there's some unemployment rate at which once you get to it, if you try to go any lower, not only will the inflation rate tick up, it will begin to accelerate upwards, okay? It is this idea that we have a natural rate of unemployment and that natural rate of unemployment is the Nehru that made it so that this was no longer seen as a policy choice. Now, if you're not with me, you're going to be, right? I'm going to get you there, okay? Let's just imagine that our policymakers say, you know what? Let's go with a 3% unemployment rate. Yes, we're going to accept a 4% inflation rate, but you know what? 3% is just way better than 5%. Basically, in the United States, for every 1% of unemployment, you, you kind of equate that to about 1.6 million jobs. So if we go from 5 to 3, all right, that's 3.2 more, 3.2 million more people having a job than they would, right? Yes, we're going to have to accept a 4% inflation rate, but maybe it's worth it to have 3.2 million more people have a job. So we decide again to go with a 3% unemployment unemployment rate and a 4% inflation rate. So what our policy authorities, you know, monetary policy and fiscal policy, what they do is expansionary policies. Let's just talk about monetary policy. Monetary policy, you would see the Fed lower the IORB, IORB, which would lower the FFR. That's right, that federal fund rate, right? They would lower the IORB. I'm doing an ample reserve framework, by the way. The FFR would go down, which is the policy rate, and hopefully other interest rates in the economy would follow suit, or they should follow suit. And as interest rates drop, we would get more spending. In an ASAD model, you would see that AD curve shift, right? So as that AD curve shifted to the right, we would move along the Phillips curve, right? We move along over here. We're going to call, let's call this point A and this point B. We move from A to B. Now, 
Big takeaway, right? When the AD curve shifts, we move along the Phillips curve, okay? So important to know that. And if AD is shifting right, we're moving left along the Phillips curve. Why? Because in an ASAD model, as you move to the right, the economy is getting better, but a better economy in a Phillips curve model is as you go to the left, right? As we go to the left, the economy is getting better in a Phillips curve model. Of course, again, in the ASAD model, as you move to the right, the economy is getting better. So basically we need to go in opposite directions as far as right and left is concerned. AD shifts to the right, we move along the economy to the left, representing that the economy is getting better, right? Yes, we're getting that higher inflation rate, but we're getting that lower unemployment rate. We're kind of stimulating the economy. But here is the big thing. That is not a policy choice. What we mean by a policy choice is we could just stay with this. This is what we could go with. We could go with a 3% and 4% that that's what we could go with. But no, this is an ARU. The 3% is an ARU. Okay, well, what is an ARU? An ARU is an accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. This is an unemployment rate at which the inflation rate will begin to accelerate upwards. And here is the reason, guys. As we sit at B, our inflationary expectations are going to adjust. Now, let's pause for a second. Every Phillips curve out there is drawn based on us having some type of inflationary expectations, some specific inflationary expectations. So to make this more clear, let me get this more modern now, okay? Since this is my NRU, we, or maybe we know, that that means my LRPC is right there, right? There's my long run Phillips curve, okay? And this is not just the Phillips curve, it's actually just the short run Phillips curve, right? And this short run Phillips curve is drawn with us having expected inflation rate of 2%. Now, how do I find that? So important students know, if you wanna find the expected inflation rate for any short run Phillips curve, you just go to the intersection of the LRPC and the SRPC. Again, to find the expected inflation rate for any short run Phillips curve, you just go to the intersection of the LRPC and the SRPC. So it's 2%. In fact, I like to put the expected inflation rate as a subscript to my SRPC. So I'm gonna put 2%. Again, let me explain that. What I'm saying is if we're on this SRPC, the expected inflation rate is 2%. Guys, if we're over here, the expected inflation rate is 2%. If we're there, the expected inflation rate is 2%. If we're there, the expected inflation rate is 2%. Anywhere on this curve, the expected inflation rate is 2%. And again, the way we find that is looking at the intersection of the SRPC and the LRPC. Now, we've done expansionary monetary policy. We've driven our economy over here to B. The problem is this is now our actual inflation rate, right? Our expected inflation rate is still 2% as long as we're on this curve, but our actual is 4%. And if we try to keep ourselves right here at this 3% unemployment rate, eventually what we are experiencing will become what we expect. Eventually what we are experiencing, what are we experiencing? The actual inflation rate. Eventually that will become what we expect. And the moment it becomes what we expect, we get a new SRPC. So I gotta draw this right to there. Okay, bring my SRPC through, SRPC. We've got a new SRPC with an expected rate of, uh, sorry, an expected inflation rate of 4%. Again, intersection of the SRPC and the LRPC, 4%, right? Now we have a new expected inflation rate, which means we get a new SRPC. Did you hear that? You get a new expected inflation rate, you get a new SRPC. Now here is basically what's going to happen. Either our policy authorities are gonna ease up on their expansionary policies, and we are going to head right over to here. We're gonna call that point C. Again, we could not stay at three and 4%, okay? We headed back to our natural rate. But if they continue to try to stimulate, say, no, 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 we're gonna keep ourselves at 3%. Again, 3% is an ARU, an accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. We won't stay at 4%. If they insist on trying to keep us at 3%, the inflation rate is going to begin to accelerate upwards, right? So either we're gonna head back to C, that's if the policy authorities take their foot off of the gas pedal, just trying to fill that back in, take their foot off of the gas pedal, or they're gonna keep their foot on the gas pedal, so no, I'm keeping us at 3%, but look at that inflation rate beginning to accelerate upwards. 
And it would continue like that, right? So once we get to D, right, let's just say that we could associate that with a 6% inflation rate, okay? A little messy graph right there, but D, 6% inflation rate, hey, we stay there, that's our actual, right? When we're at D, still the expected is 4%, but the actual is six. And if we stay there, eventually what we're experiencing, again, that actual inflation rate will become what we expect and we would get a new SRPC. And now I'm about to head out through the top of the video, right? So again, back to there or head to there. We either get our foot off the gas pedal and we'd head over here, we'll call that E, or we keep our foot on the gas pedal and we're gonna head up to F. I'm right there at the top of the video, all right? About to lose any space up there, but I hope that you get it, guys. We can't go with a 3% unemployment rate and a 4% inflation rate in the long run. It's not a policy choice in the long run. We can't go with that because our natural rate of unemployment is 5% and that is a Nehru. That's the lowest the unemployment rate can get without the inflation rate beginning to accelerate upwards. If we try to stay at 3% in Nehru, that inflation rate will accelerate upwards. Boy, I hope you watched that whole video. I really think if you watch part one in this video, you are a long way to being an expert, a master of the Phillips curve. We'll see you in the next video.